Let us pray, holy and loving God, giver of all good gifts, we thank you for the great gift you give us when you give us to each other in your church. Be present with us in ways that surprise us with your joy. Awaken us to your possibilities. Be among us as a spirit of wisdom, compassion, and courage. Help us be changed by how we meet you in each other and change us in ways that help us transform ourselves and the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome to annual meeting part two. Sequels are all the rage and no, uh, no different here at All Saints Church. If you are new at All Saints or visiting with us this morning, would love to know more about future events. There are green contact sheets at the doors. Take a moment to give us your contact information at the welcome table, which is in the, uh, the office building, the rectory. Uh, you can pick up a red welcome bag, includes a welcome card to take with you in return, or you can fill it out on the spot. Uh, at all times, we put our faith into action at All Saints Church. This Sunday, we are writing the Ambassador for Israel to express our concern regarding a plan put forward by the municipality of Jerusalem that churches in Jerusalem should pay municipal taxes. So please stop by the action table by the door uh, to participate in this week's action. I want to say hello to everyone who is streaming us. So turn and wave at the camera, everybody. Welcome to everyone who's streaming us. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit a little later about the financial situation and where we are right now, uh, but it's a good time to remind you that there is always time. It is always a good time to make a gift to All Saints Church, uh, and so you can do that from where you are. If you're streaming, there's a donate button on your website. Uh, if you have made or increased your pledge, thank you so much. If you've made a special gift, thank you so much, uh, and there's always time to do one or all of those. Uh, one of the great things we get to do at our annual meetings is both look backward and look forward. Uh, and it's always great to start by looking back because it reminds us of the richness of our life together. Uh, last year we started doing uh, what we're calling a video annual report. Uh, and I gotta say that we asked Keith Holman to put this together without really any concept of what a gargantuan undertaking it is. And Keith, the hours that Keith works on this is incredible and you're gonna see it in the video that you're about to see. So Keith, thank you so much. Um, and so with that, I uh, want to present the annual report of 2017 and a little bit of 18 at All Saints Church. So watch, listen, and enjoy. The economy of God is grace. The economy of God is surpassing love, completely apart from desert. The economy of God is I will love you so much that eventually you're not going to be able to resist my love and it will fill you up and it will overflow out of you to the world around you. I heard Jesus say, love your neighbor as yourself. And so that means that for those of us in the movement for black lives, being pro-black does not mean being anti-white. For the movement that I see, I see you guys coming on up there to Northwest Pasadena, giving your time, helping out, showing some love, helping with resources. Queremos todos nuestros derechos, los queremos aquí y los queremos ahora. And so the social revolution taking place can be summarized in three little words. They are not big words. One does not need an ex extravagance in vocabulary to understand them. I did watch part of the inauguration this morning and one of the um, reporters was talking to some of our president's um, supporters and the woman said, the, asked her, well, what did you think about the inauguration speech? And she said, well, it was the first time I've heard God in eight years. And I thought, what did you do? My fervent prayer this morning is that the marches we saw and participated in yesterday are but the beginnings of a movement, a movement of sacred resistance that will equip and empower us. <laughs> So I ask that you do this work, not for me and my kid, but now that you've heard my story, if I called and told you something happened to one of my children, you would grieve too. I want to tell you a love story. 
It's set in the dreamy hills of California where a spirited congregation and a life-giving priest seem destined at long last to find each other. People of all saints, greet your new rector. Today is called A Day Without a Woman. There are a huge number of women who work here and do incredible work. And we said for one day, we're giving you all the day off. God dwells in you. Lift up your hearts. I know the rest of you will be saying the same, so let's get out of here. Head on to Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Many's the time I've been mistaken. He saw deep and divides of race and class at home and people dying agonizing deaths under the American flag and at American hands halfway around the world. He saw these things and like Kipling, Paul Simon picked up his pen and he wrote American Tune, a song that for me has always been the soundtrack of Good Friday. A song that if we so were truthful, if we really took Kipling's prayer to heart, would be our so national anthem. Away from and Delilah Ray June, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Breathe on these slain bodies. Breathe life. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. We remember and celebrate Jesus' resurrection, but we would not be here if Mary and Mary had not woken up that morning and despite their grief, despite their rage, despite their fear and their weariness, or, or maybe because of it, said what women throughout time in the face of all these things have said, still I rise. I am not going away my shot. For me, serving as an acolyte, singing in the choir, serving communion are all ways in which I give and receive the Holy Spirit. Each individual is welcomed and appreciated here, no matter sexual orientation, gender identity, immigration status, language spoken, or race. The mix of different cultures is what makes America such an incredible melting pot. In insisting on conformity, we lose what makes America special. Zelda Kennedy, Kathy McGinn, and James Walker. Just come on out just for a second. Holy and loving God, we give you thanks for James Walker, Kathy McGinn, and Zelda Kennedy. We give thanks for all they have been to us, for all they are now, and for all in you they are yet to become. Let the church say, Amen. We pray for those killed this day in Charlottesville. Oramos por todos aquellos que murieron hoy en Charlottesville. The very asking of that question apparently began rumors that I was riding into town and declaring prohibition. <laughs> um, and I have not and I am not. May these backpacks and school supplies be a sign to these learners that they have everything they need to grow this year in school. We're gonna sit at the welcome table. For us as All Saints table. Church, this welcome table is both legacy and We're destiny. It is who we have been in the past and who God is calling us to be in new and powerful ways today and into the future. 
welcome to Celebration and Ministry Sunday. They were looking for the most chronically homeless, most vulnerable, most likely to die on the streets within a year. Root, root for the doctors. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes around. If you're new to All Saints, we do this every Sunday. <laughs> Memory can make us love the strangest things. I love the smell of cigarette smoke infused for years into the upholstery of an old overstuffed armchair. As my brain recreates that odor, my blood pressure drops, my heart smiles, and the tiniest tear begins to well up in my eye. Because that smell to me is my grandmother. There's a whole lot of passion in this room. God has sent us a 66 chapter text. Scripture is God's love letter. I have t uh, grandparents on both sides, paternal and maternal, that were enslaved in this country. First came the family history of slave trading and owning in New York City. Why do you think uh, people are being heard, victims are being heard, and these extraordinary swift, often, changes uh, are happening? In the beginning was the word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. We gather here to ensure that those whom the world too easily forgot in life will not be forgotten Martha. in death. We thought, you know, what we really need to do is just to come together and be joyful, just to come together and laugh, and so immediately, who came to mind was... Pasadena, make some noise! Today, because we celebrate Our Lady of Guadalupe, I would like for us to focus on the rights of women. It was not a silent night. All was not calm. All was not bright. There was nothing peaceful, calm, or mild about Christmas. It was a birth like every other birth where fear and hope, chaos and cacophony, agony and ecstasy meet. Mary was not sweetly glowing. She was pushing and screaming and swearing. And she would be the first not only to testify that Christmas was not a silent night, but I'm sure to have a few choice words about that little Lord Jesus, no crying, he makes nonsense. Christmas was not a silent night, and that is our hope. The God who is our hope is the God who dives right into the middle of the chaos, who says, you are not alone. We got this together.
I hesitated a few minutes because I thought that the children and the animals might come from, <laughs> from either side. Keith, it wasn't hard enough to follow Mike this morning. Now I have to follow you. Good morning. Good morning to each of you gathered here in this space and to those in spaces far and near streaming with us. The agenda calls for the senior warden's report. And all week people have been asking, and Trula, what is your address about? It all sounded very formal and very official. My much less formal plan was to simply share with you, my church family, a few prayerfully discerned, heartfelt remar remarks. And something miraculous happened. I learned this morning that Mike and I pray to the same Lord and our hearts are the same because each and every item I was going to mention he mentioned, and I, <laughs> and I think that that is not only a testament to the year that we've spent together, but it also says how united we are in what we're going to do in 2018. The senior warden is the rector's warden, so all those early mornings, all those telephone calls showed me today that we have been together the whole of this year. So thank you, Mike. The magnificent piece of art that we just witnessed unfolded all the awesome accomplishments of our outstanding ministries and our programs. Our special appreciation is extended to the volunteers, the staff, the committee members, for their gracious donation of time, talent, and dollars. Nothing that you saw here, nothing that we have accomplished could have been done without you. When you watch this video, you see yourself in action. And for that, I am applauding you and I am thanking you. little bit else about our history. November 2016, Mike Kenman became our rector and our spiritual advisor. The timing was simply impeccable. For mere days later, unanticipated circumstances compelled many to seek comfort inside our walls. In 2017, All Saints celebrated the retirement of tenured staff and warmly welcomed new arrivals. Change inevitably creates feelings of loss. And during the past 12 months, the All Saints family has felt loss and said very sad goodbyes. All the while, an unrelenting parade of stressful and unusual occurrences played out on the national and world stage. It is necessary in times like this to seek answers and comfort in community. Together, we were able to love and support each other. Together, resilience is found and strength is developed. Together, we will thrive as a church. And together, we will rebuild Scott Hall. <laughs> if you have recently become a part of All Saints, you might have noticed we often ask, what brought you to All Saints? Or, we'll cleverly say, what is it about our parish that speaks to you? Everyone has a reply 
readily, readily available in both a condensed version and an extended one. <laughs> While each personal story is unique, most reference, whoever you are and wherever you find yourself on your journey of faith, you are welcome. You are welcome at Christ's table and you are welcome at All Saints. Others answer this question because they find strength in our agreement, as stated in our mission statement, that we will explore and find the inclusive love of God in Christ, and we will embody all of that in our spirituality, in our community, and most definitely in our work toward peace and justice. Our values, our vision, and our statements of intent define us as a beloved community of ra radical love and radical welcome. I don't have to tell you all the ways that through the years All Saints has walked in line with this mission. It'll be a little bit of a spoiled sermon for those of you who have not heard the sermon, and for those of you who have, I'm sure you will remember. So I'll jump to the conclusion of that by saying, throughout 2018 and well beyond, All Saints will continue to follow the call that directs us to become a bright beacon of God's inclusive love in the church and in the world. During last week's Vestry Staff Conference, our rector, Vestry Committee Chairs, staff, current and newly elected Vestry members were asked the following question. What is the best experience you've had at All Saints recently? What experience reminded you that we are living our vision? At each table, individuals shared their best recent experience and identified the commonalities of their stories. The common thread of the sometimes tearfully told events was that they all detailed unexpected acts of kindness, expressions of compassion and support rendered person to person when least expected and most needed. A gauge of a congregation's strength is how it reacts when one of its own is in need. I can jump to the conclusion. <laughs> But before I do, I want to um, try a little something. Recently, it has become very apparent to me that I do not know the exact terms or the meaning of those phrases that our youth employ. <laughs> so I've checked the Urban Dictionary. And I believe that I'm on safe ground using my newly acquired terms. <laughs> Mike, hold my beer. <laughs> I'm going to try something that's just a little different for a person of my generation. <laughs> Here goes. For daily performing feats of magic to ensure our meeting spaces maximize both comfort and productivity, I'm shouting out buildings and grounds. <laughs> You like that, huh? Okay. In that case, I'm giving a shout out to 
the All Saints choirs, our organists, our musical directors for enriching our lives and providing us the inspiration, the comfort that can only be found in music. A big shout out for our staff for working long hours in small spaces and multiple projects. When you learn something you new, you tend to overdo it, so I'll just give you one more. <laughs> and a big shout out to the community of streamers. We are grateful for your presence. We are grateful for your loyalty. And we depend on your support. And just before I conclude, I want to say a couple of things more. I had given a lot of attention to what I was going to say at the end. And each time I found myself, now don't you cry, or what does that thought mean to your heart? So I decided to write it down, because you don't want me to cry. Not cute at all. I have appreciated being your senior warden for this year, Mike. It has been my honor to serve you and all saints. And I thank you for your support. Your prayers were heard because I was able to continue for the whole year. Your encouragement and your love mean everything to me. I want to leave a good amount of time that we have left for questions and answers. And first of all, just once again, it truly, I, there are no words for what it has meant. So. Um, and, and also to echo thanks for just an incredible, amazing staff. Um, it, it's so easy not to see how much work they do. Um, and just think about everything that we saw in that amazing video. I'm like, we get to be a part of all this. And it's amazing. And it's the work of so many people. But you all are just, I mean, there are, there are not words. Just incredible. So thank you. And, and then just a a word about the vestry and it's been such an amazing year to be a part of the vestry of All Saints, at least I think it has been. Um, the conversations we have had, the way that you all have put yourself out there, um, that we have shown that as a body uh, we can speak different truths to each other in love and respect uh, and really wrestle with things, uh, even if it means meetings go a little longer than we'd wanted. Um, but it really, it is, it is an honor to, to work with all of you, and I am so much looking forward to the year ahead. So can you also please thank your vestry? So I have performed a magic trick here, which I didn't mean to perform, and that's that Jim Laduha gave me a piece of paper that had all sorts of wonderful things on it and information, and I made it disappear, and he knew me, and he made a second copy. Yeah. So it's like, I have no idea. It's like, I'm looking everywhere for this thing. I have no idea where it, where it went. And so that's good staff work. So I uh, want to give you an update. We talked before a couple weeks ago about uh, we had a deficit of $550,000. Um, and Jim just 
thank you so much for how you have shepherded us through this. And, and, and what I gotta say is because you know, the way that we've approached this, and Jim, this is so much of you, um, is it's not about falling into fear. It's not about falling into anxiety. It is about remembering that we're people of abundance and hope. And Jim, you reminded us of that in wonderful ways. Um, and the response you all gave has been incredible. We have 110 increased pledges, totaling more than $147,000. So, yeah. We have uh, seven one-time special gifts, totaling more than $29,000. I'm going to keep going just for a second. 23 renewed pledges, totaling $41,134. And 28 new pledges, totaling $26,923. Um, and so, yeah, give yourselves a hand for all that. Um, and so please, if you haven't renewed your pledge for 2017, please do that now. If you've never pledged and want to, this is a great time to do that. Um, and still, we would, you know, we'd love it if you've pledged for 2018 and you feel called by God to increase that pledge. We would love that increase. Um, we're coming together in, in exciting ways, and you can just email or call or text Jim Laduha. Um, I think he put his phone number on a billboard on the 210, <laughs> so it's easy to find. Uh, you can pledge at the website, click donate at the top, and then down to the pledge form link. Um, where this gives us is that we have, you know, we started with that $550,000 deficit. We've cut it down um, considerably. I haven't done the, the, the math on it, but we still have, um, we still have a sizable deficit. Now, we have a carryover from last year. And the Finance Committee's recommendation on that is to take 250,000 of that carryover, carry it over to this year. Um, to, we have 10,000, which is essentially savings from all the amazing new light bulbs, energy savings. Um, the recommendation is to put that into a designated fund for uh, climate change, um, not to hasten it, but to prevent it. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and then also, we, because we have these deteriorating buildings, we have increasing capital needs, and you can't keep taking money out of that without putting that back in, so looking at doing that. So that leaves us with still a, a chunk to make up in the budget. Um, and the Finance Committee has made a recommendation which will go to Vestry uh, this Tuesday. Um, I made an announcement about this at the 9 o'clock service, which I think unintentionally caused some anxiety and fear, and what I said was, uh, the, the vestry is going to meet on Tuesday. There will be several agenda items. The main one will be adopting a budget for 2018. Um, when that part of the conversation happens, the vestry is going to go into executive session um, mm -hmm. because that's a standard thing that you do in a nonprofit when part of what you discuss is personnel. This doesn't mean anyone's going to get laid off. This means the personnel is the largest chunk of our budget. And if we're going to put everything on the table and the vestry is going to do its job of discerning the mission and ministry of All Saints Church, um, then it's got to involve that kind of conversation. And they need to be free to have that conversation um, without staff present. Um, and uh, because that's, that's just not appropriate when you're discussing personnel. Um, you know, I'll be present as president, as chair of the chapter. Um, Although, you know, if, if, if someone moves to, to put my position on the table in any form, then I'll leave. And that would be, in, that would be incredibly appropriate um, for me to do. Uh, your vestry has incredibly hard work to do. They do it incredibly well. And what we want to do is make sure that you all are set up to do the work that you need to do. Um, again, I have been incredibly excited by what's happened the last couple weeks. When we first realized we had this budget deficit, my prayer was, uh, and it's kind of a trope, but it's true, can we take what is a crisis and turn it into an opportunity? And I've seen us do that and talk not just about how do we close the gap, but what are the issues that are being raised by this? And once the ink is dry on the 2018 budget, um, what's the work that we need to start doing right away for 2019? Um, and 2020 and 2021, so we don't keep finding ourselves in the same position again. So it's been uh, a remarkably clarifying uh, last several weeks. Um, and frankly, for me, it's been full of hope, and largely that is because of you all. Um, you know, you, you saw the video that Keith put together. Um, this is a remarkable community. Uh, you know, I'm not sure there's a church in the Episcopal Church that wouldn't willingly trade places with All Saints Church in, in what we get to be a part of. And it is such a gift and it is such an abundance. Um, 
And yeah, there's a budget gap, but we can't fall into the trap of thinking of ourselves in terms of scarcity. We have to realize that we have the greatest abundance of gifts and the biggest piece of that abundance is the community. And so uh, I just wanna thank you all for being here, for answering God's call to be a part of the All Saints community and to say, I am so looking forward to the adventure ahead. And, and with that, we have about 10 minutes. Um, I would love to, we've got some folks uh, from the vestry who have microphones. Um, just open up the floor for any questions. Uh, they can be for me, they can be for vestry members. Um, just go for it. Yes, Bob. Um, will the video that Keith did be on the website so other people can see it? Uh, yes, it will be. For a fee? No, just kidding. No, no, no it'll be, it'll, no, and actually what we would love you to do is um, find it and then share it. That is a great commercial for All Saints Church. You've had someone that you've wanted to invite to All Saints Church but weren't sure how. Um, send them the link to that video. Say, this is what I'm talking about. So, where else? Wanted to thank you and the vestry for all of your work. What do we need to do to get a playground worthy of all saints? Hmm. So, I, I would want to slightly reframe that question, and I would say, what do we do to get a playground that is worthy of any of God's children? Because um, all, God, you know, I, I hope we have wonderful play, playgrounds not here, but in northwest Pasadena and everywhere. But your question is about this one. Um, and to say that that is something, I think your vestry just heard you. This has been a point of conversation. Uh, we, we have had some sort of interesting chicken and egg conversations because we are looking at what to do with Scott Hall, um, and that's a larger renovation, and uh, there has been some reticence of a, do we do something here that then we then have to tear down if we do this, um, but it's becoming clear that we need to do something. Uh, so I think what, what you need to do is what you have just done, and you've raised the issue in front of the vestry, and it's absolutely on our radar screen, so thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Great, thanks. I, I almost did this, you know, I... Say your name. Glenn Orton. Thanks, Glenn. I almost, with a hair's breadth, did this in the prayers this morning, but I figured I'd, I'd wait if I went off ink. <laughs> Melissa wouldn't invite me back. Um, but I really want to give a great shout-out to Parish Life because... Uh, Four days after the last time I read the prayers, I was in the hospital for 22 days, and it was a real lifeline to get visits from Sally and Jim and to get all of your prayers embodied in the prayer shawl. So I really give a great shout out to that ministry. When I got home, finally, I was recovering and still couldn't make uh, services, so podcasts were a lifeline to everything that I was doing. Um, and I still keep the prayer shawl over. I'm still not, I'm still cutting my GI system in shape, and. Uh, that's all. Thank you for all of that. So a uh, shout out to all of those uh, ministries because they really yeah. make a personal difference. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and I want to I jump on that. It's always risky sort of singling out one person or one ministry because then everyone else feels offended. Um, so please just sort of take this in the spirit that it was, that it's intended, which is that we moved recently. Um, you know, congregational development was a staff position. Um, and uh, after we had some clergy leave, we didn't have staff for it. And we actually had Jim Laduha doing it and development, and that just wasn't sustainable. Um, and so we said, you know, we're going to really let the Congregational Development Committee take charge of congregational development. And they have. Um, and the hours, the, the committee has been phenomenal, particularly the hours that Nancy Necker, who is that committee chair, has put in are just amazing. And so I don't know where Nancy is, but wherever, wherever she is, it is, it is just extraordinary. So thanks. What else? Wow, things must be going great. <laughs> so, well, that got us going. Okay, Bob. <laughs> I, I was struck this morning uh, by the statistics that you cited about the growth of Asians in our community. Yeah. Uh, not just Pasadena, but the San Gabriel Valley. Yeah. And I'm wondering what strategies we're thinking about in terms of taking advantage of those opportunities and challenges of the growth of that community. Yeah, and that's something that we are starting to look at just now and we need to look at more. I gotta tell you, um, and I'm gonna lift up just an amazing member, every state member of our staff is amazing, but uh, Wei Chung, Zhao, and Fong. What Wei Chung did with his, how many of you were able to be at his doctoral recital, first of all? Um, 
So what Wei Chung and Fong came to me and they said, because they're, you know, they, they adore All Saints Church. Um, and, you know, both from China and they have a passion for sharing All Saints Church um, with people from their native country. And so they came to me and they said, we want to schedule this doctoral recital so it coincides with the Chinese New Year. Um, and then for the, festi- for the reception afterwards, have a lantern festival. And then invite um, all these folks they knew who were first generation or others moving here from China to be here. And they did that. And then Wei Chung stood up at the reception and basically did a commercial for All Saints Church um, and said, please come here. It is things like we're looking at, for the first time, having a line item in the budget for translation. You'll notice now that we have our Lenten, not, not just in the Lord's Prayer, is in uh, English, Spanish, and simple Mandarin, but our pew cards for Lent and Easter are in English, Spanish, and simple Mandarin. Uh, I've been talking with Diane Bruce, who is our assisting bishop. Um, Diane uh, speaks fluent Mandarin, and she is uh, deeply involved with uh, Asian ministries on a diocesan level. Um, so you're asking the right question in terms of what the strategies are. That's what we need to think about. We certainly need to think about it you know, as we think about diversity in our staffing. That's another th- piece we need to think about. Um, but you, seriously, you drive uh, 10 minutes south of here, um, and you don't see any English. Um, and I think it's an amazing opportunity and an amazing gift. Uh, and, and frankly, part of the reason that we were so excited and blessed to get Jenny Wong as our interim uh, director of music. And oh my gosh, she has, I mean, I, I'm not sure any church anywhere has a combination of like what we have right now. Um, but Jenny has an incredible sort of repertoire of music that spans so many different cultures, and that's absolutely what we're looking for. So just thank you for raising that, and that's something that we absolutely, you know, that's got to be a priority. Um, I mean, the, de- the, the demographics, there is a gift to the clarity of the demographics. Um, and it is that, you know, that Latino-Hispanic community, the Asian community, especially Chinese, and of course always, have cho- you know, families with children. Um, you know, this is, it's the present and future of All Saints Church. And if you don't fall into that category, it doesn't mean you're getting kicked out. You know, it doesn't mean there's no room for you. It means that we get to be a part of creating this new place together and building on everything that's happened before. So, yeah, Bob, thank you so much for raising that. Yeah, I, I knew it was intense until actually Jim Laduha gave me a newspaper article that showed me those statistics. I didn't know it was that much. So, we have another one. Yes, somewhere. Hey, Betty. Uh, one of the things that um, was brought up in relationship to a book discussion group that I was yeah. leading was that uh, people were saying, you know, people come from very long distance to try to be yeah. here with us. Yeah. Um, and, and one of the people was saying, I'm wondering if there could be some kind of worship group extensions um, in places like Claremont or Long Beach or things like that that would add to the streaming with some actual human physical presence. And I was wondering if that was something, I'm, I'm not putting it on the staff to do more than that. I know you're already, you <laughs> yeah. know, but you know, something that the rest of us might think about doing. Right, so part of, thank you so much. So part of what, when you're a church community as large as All Saints, um, you know, we get 1,000, 1,100 or, or so on a Sunday and we have 3,000 or so or more members. Um, you have to find ways to break that down. Uh, Social scientists say 150 people is sort of the definition that humans have had of a tribe, which is, that's about how many people you can be in community with and know each other's names and be involved in each other's lives. Uh, And so we need to find a way to break that, break this, everything we love about the diversity and the size of the All Saints community without losing that, break it down into smaller groups. And this is something that congregational development has been working on. I know Steve, you're sitting over there. This is a passion of yours that you've been working on. Uh, and so what we're lo- looking on, and maybe it does take the form of worship groups in different geographic areas. That's certainly something that could happen. Uh, what we're looking on at, at, at congregational development is a couple things. Uh, the first is having an adult formation experience that is both for newcomers and, shall we say, veteran All Saints people alike. Uh, so that newcomers aren't just meeting newcomers, that we're all meeting each other and having a common experience diving into what does it mean to be All Saints Church. How do we read the Bible? How do we deal with theology? What are the spiritual practices that sustain 
our lives. I think someone once said there were eight habits of love or something. I'm not sure. I heard something <laughs> about that somewhere. Um, so, you know, how, you know, so, but how do, you know, how, how do we come together in a community and support each other uh, in our life together in small ways? And maybe that happens in geographic worship communities. Maybe it happens in different ways. Um, but that is, that is something that is at the top of the list that congregational development is working on. Um, we need to move to, we need to, move to, the, uh, to the end of this so Keith can get his streaming over to the church. Um, I just again want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much to everyone, to the staff, to the vestry, um, but especially to you, the people of All Saints here, and you, the people of All Saints around the country and around the world. Um, it, I'm not afraid to cry, and you made me cry, so you said you couldn't cry, and you made me cry. <laughs> Um, this place makes me weep on a regular basis because that's what you do when you're in love. Um, and it is a wonderful, wonderful thing to be a part of All Saints. And thank you. So, amen. <laughs> <laughs>